<sighs> I gotta get to time cat, but I am... I See, this is why it was a good idea to film until I got tired, because now that I have a job, I sleep like an old lady, so now I'm tired. Um, the horse and, his, and the boy is next in the Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, so this story takes place while Peter is High King. Like, if you've seen the movies, then you know that, um... Like, we jump from Aslan leaving and they're in the High Palace to them, like, going through the forest on their horses and they find the lamp. Lucy finds the lamp post and they go back to the real world. Um, I also have a comment on that that I don't want to forget, so I'm going to say it now. Somebody on a Tumblr a few years ago was like, uh, hey, so is no one going to talk about the fact that these adult people go back to um, 1940s children? And somebody said that the reason uh, he wrote it like that is because that's what it was like after the war. They were adult men fighting in the war, and then he came back to England and finished college. Like, that's what it was like for them. So, um, like, it, their memories, the way it's explained is that their memories do get, like, wiped a little bit, but it's still bothering them to the point that, like, Susan has issues with boys, Lucy is a child from Dune, and um, Peter and Edmund get into fights a whole lot. So, like, it doesn't... In the movies, it's... I feel like in the movies, it's mentioned a little bit what with Peter and Edmund getting into fights, but um, it's, it's, it's mentioned, I think, more in the books that, uh, yeah, like, Lucy it just knows shit. That's why I say she's a child from Dune, because she just knows things that she shouldn't know. Um... <laughs> Susan has issues with boys. When I say issues, I mean, like, promiscuous issues. I think also there's something about how, like, the other three Pevensey kids die, but Susan doesn't because she's not allowed to go to heaven. I have no idea. Let's not forget that C.S. Lewis was, like, a huge Christian. But I don't think a terrible Christian, but a huge Christian. So anyway, The Horse and the Boy. This book takes place while Peter is a uh, high king. Um, Arshish and his son Shasta live in Kalomern, which is not Narnia. It is north of Narnia? Not north. I think it's east of Narnia. It's either east or north of Narnia. That was a thing that I did not know. Narnia is not the name of the realm. Narnia is the name of the country. <laughs> like, who would have guessed? Uh, yeah. Um, Shasta isn't actually Arshish's kid. Um, because he's, uh, Arshish, not Arshish, Shasta? I believe it's Shasta. Shasta is white, and Arshish is not. And I don't know if that's supposed to be a statement about something, but whatever. We're not going to talk about it again. Um, Shasta knows that his dad is going to sell him at some point, though, because he's not the most useful. And also, they're poor farmers, so. Uh, there is... A guy who comes traveling and he has a horse and the horse can talk because the horse is from Narnia and the horse would like to go back to Narnia. So um, he's called Bree, by the way. Shasta goes with him because you know what? He doesn't like it here and his dad's probably going to get rid of him anyway. So who gives a shit? He can help somebody along the way, which is nice. Um, yeah, I also love how like... The horses and uh, the animals in other places, that means that they don't speak. As I'm just like, nah, fuck y'all. <laughs> Only the horses in Narnia can talk. Um, yeah, so they go... They um, He takes the horse and they ride off. And he's never ridden a horse before, so that's fun. And someone's following them after three days. But it's another horse from Narnia, which is nice. So, um, horses from Narnia got, they got, they were smuggled across the border. They got stolen from Narnia, just like Shasta, but we'll get there. Um, Shasta looks like the, they get to a town and like Shasta looks like the prince. So they accidentally take him, like the guards take him instead of uh, the actual prince to his house or whatever like that, where they're staying. Cause Edmund and Susan are there to like discuss stuff. I don't know what they're actually there to discuss, but it ends with the prince trying to kidnap Susan because he wants to marry her, and Susan's like, no. Um, would have put a real dampener on things for the next four books, for, four? For the next three books if she had been in this one random land away from her siblings. 
At least then she might have made it to heaven. Um, anyway. Uh, they go to sleep for the night, and the real prince comes back while they were asleep and comments on how he and Shasta look the same. Shasta has to cross the desert by himself, and, um, they, uh, he and the horses, I do believe, end up meeting up, and they're able to get to, uh, they're able to get to the border between their country and Narnia. For some reason, also, and maybe this is just because we've never gone to any other countries, but I get the sense that uh, Caloran is where Caspian and Co. are from. Because it's never actually explained where they came from. They just showed up in Narnia one day, according to the movies, and I can't imagine that in the books it's the same. But you know how they gloss over things for movies? Uh, yeah. So, a Calamarin army comes because they want the prince. No, the prince wants Susan. Um, yeah. A lion sends them running. Gee. Uh, Bree ends up abandoning them. That horse, he ends up abandoning them and he feels bad about it because he's kind of been an asshole this entire time and kind of selfish. Um, but whatever. Yeah. Susan and Edmund find the two of them and find Shasta and, Bo and Bree and uh, comments on how he looks just like the prince because the prince is still with his family, so there's no way this can also be the prince. Turns out, it is also the prince. Shasta's actual name is Corin? No, Shasta's actual name is Kor. His brother's name is Corin. It's obnoxious, but we're not going to talk about it. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of where that ends. Shasta's home now, and he's a prince, and that's cool. Um, I did not know that there were other princes and stuff in Narnia. That kind of seems like an important thing to mention. But granted, in the movie, Santa is also there. And I don't think Santa was there in the book. Um, yeah. Also, they turned the prince into a donkey because he wanted Susan. And I guess that's them saying that he's a jackass. So. Um, it was cute. Uh... It was a lot better paced than Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe. That book is too fast. Um, but I see why they didn't make much mention of the other places, though, and why there's, like, why there's, like, Narnia is, like, three movies rather than, like, six, because they very easily could have made six. But unless you've read the books, these other ones won't make sense to you without the context. Um... I did wonder what they were doing, though, when they became these adults, so that's cool. My talking is starting to get weird because I'm tired. Alice Through the Looking Glass was a fucking acid trip just as much as the first one. Um, I caught a contact. Hi. Man. Can I, can I tell you something? What? So this is completely unrelated to anything you've been talking about, but Costco sells emergency food supplies and kits. And it appears that both of them contain gluten. Okay. M my friend is my friend is gluten free and um, also cares a whole lot about inclusion. So, yeah. Um. How am I supposed to survive the apocalypse? Hey, so I want you to know that given everything that's going on right now in the world, not a funny joke. Um, that's what like it's real, but that's not that's that's that that's not funny, <laughs> and also not great for our anxiety. Um, I'm sorry, thanks for letting me know. Yeah. So there's a looking glass, right? And it's, it's Alice sees her room, but everything's the wrong way around, and she falls through it or whatever. And there's a book called Jabberwocky, and that's got the poem in it. If you have seen Alice in Wonderland, the Tim Burton version, if you have seen that movie, then you will know that the Jabberwocky is a weird dragon-type creature that, like, breathes fire that she's supposed to defeat. That's not what it is in the series. The Jabberwocky is a monster, but it's just a poem. It's it's not that serious. I do not know where Tim Burton got that from, but also he made an action film, not an Alice in Wonderland film, I feel like. Just watch the Disney version. They already colonized all of our childhoods. Just watch the Disney version. Um, yeah. So Alice ends up in a garden, and the flowers talk because the ground is hard. Soft ground makes the flowers sleepy. Um... So the flowers are rude, but not the tiger lily. She speaks, um, 
Uh, to Alice speaks to the Red Queen, who is rude, obviously. But um, Alice, she's a giant chessboard with the pieces. And she said that she wouldn't mind being a pawn, but would like to be the queen. That was weird. The chessboard is in the forest, and the Red Queen leaves her there. And, um, yeah. This is, this is what I wrote down. Do your eyes ever glaive over and you can't really keep it straight no matter how much you reread it? <laughs> she meets Tweedledee and Tweedledum. There's a lot of poetry in this one. And they tell her she might not be real. And then she meets the White Queen and it's a bit of a mess. Alice also ends up being seven and a half feet tall. She's very calm for a seven-year-old. Like, I get that seven-year-olds can, like, accept a lot of things, but if you ever talk to a seven-year-old, there's no fucking way they would be this calm. I don't give a damn if you are from England or not. No seven-year-old in the world is this calm. Especially about being seven and a half feet tall. Um. I also would like to know what the hell that second Tim Burton movie is about. Because it's called Alice Through the Looking Glass. But something about the Mad Hatter being sick and Lord Time is there. And I think he's the antagonist. I, Hatter's got like a whole like family. Huh? I think all of us would like to know what's going on with that. Well, especially having read Alice Through the Looking Glass. Like, I can at least see it with Alice in Wonderland. But especially with Alice Through the Looking What the fuck is that second book even about? I just... Man... Did you know that people think that uh, the guy who wrote it was a pedophile? Because, like, Alice... There, there is a real Alice who he, um... Describes himself as being friends with? And, like, I get that, um... I get that sometimes people will say, like, Oh, things were different back then. It is never okay in any decade for a 30-year-old guy to describe himself as friends with a child. Even with your own kids, it's still weird. Mm -mm. I don't like it. Um, yeah. There's some missing uh, diary entries of his, and his artwork is a little sus. <laughs> um, I do believe, though, that Alice in the Looking Glass is less comprehensible than Alice in Wonderland. Because, man, I felt drunk reading this book. <laughs> 